6.5 is modeling real-world data using scatter plots. So hopefully you guys have seen scatter plots before. So what a scatter plot is is some kind of oops, some kind of uh, data set that looks something like this, where you're going to have points that kind of go along the line, but there may be some points off the line. Okay, so that's a scatter plot. So it's a set of data points graphed as ordered pairs, so as points in a coordinate plane. A line of fit is a line that closely approximates the set of data. So there's some kind of line that will go through most of the points. So maybe like a line like that, kind of going through a lot of them. All right. The prediction equation is the equation of the line of fit. Now your calculator has lots of different methods to find the best line possible, um, so that the distance of those points is as small as possible. We're not going to use the calculator method, and that's kind of what that extra page is that I passed out. If you want to know the calculator method, you can do that. Okay, but we're going to do it all by hand. So it will be not so bad. Don't be scared. Um, so it says, example one, the table below shows the approximate percent of students who sent applications to two colleges in various years since 1985. Uh, make a scatter plot of the data. So first you need to decide what your x and y is. So usually I just let x be the first one and y be the second one. Okay, so for my x values, I'm going to have years since 1985. And for my y values, I'm going to have percent. All right, and I'm going to plot these points. So notice the x values go up to 15. So um, you have 0, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. It probably makes sense to use those values, right? So let's go ahead and use them. So I'm going to say 3. 6, 9, 12, 15. Yeah, you could go further if you want. Now the percent, um, it goes up to 20. Um, so maybe go by twos. And I think 20 ends up being the very top one. So you're going to have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and so on. You don't have to label all of them, but might help on this one, 16, 18. All right, so when I plot it, I have lots of points, right? So the first point is 0 for the x, 20 for the y. So 0, comma 20. So I'm going to have a point at 0, 20, so right there. All right, and then I'm going to have 3, 18. And then I'm going to have 6, 15. So now that's not on one of the grid lines. It's just between the 14 and the 16. All right, then I have 9, 15. So that's definitely off the line. And then 12, 14, and 15, 13. Okay, so it's our scatter plot. So take your rulers, and we want to decide a line that goes through most of the data. So as you kind of move your ruler around, you guys can see that um, some lines aren't going to be good. Like, for instance, if I picked these two lines here, did you see the line that I just drew? That's leaving out those last three, so it's probably not going to be a good indicator of our data, right? Um, or maybe if I send it to, through the first and last, that one looks pretty good. If you send it through the first point and the last point, because it looks like most of them are on the line, except for one, definitely. Could be a couple that are off. Okay, so that's the line that I want to use. Now, like I said, your calculator is much more scientific. It's going to use, it's going to find the equation of the line through every single pair of points. So if you have six points, it ends up being 30 pairs that you're going to have. Okay, so it would do all that. Um, and then uh, it's going to find the best line. Okay, so we're not going to do that. We're just going to pick any two points. Okay, usually I pick the first and the last if it works out pretty well. So I'm going to use these two points. So it says, how well does the line fit the data? We're going to say pretty close. All right, so make a prediction equation. So like I said, I'm going to use 0, 20, and I'm going to use 15, 13, and I'm going to come up with the equation of the line. So this is what you guys did in 2.2 to 2.4. Okay, so your slope is 13 minus 20 over 15 minus 0. All right, so you're going to get negative 7 over 15. All right, and then your y-intercept we actually have. So do you guys see how we have the point 0, 20? Since I have that 0 first, that is the y-intercept. Okay, so this is the y-intercept, v equals 20. Okay, and that's only because I have the 0 first. So you end up getting y equals negative 7 over 15x plus 20. 
And you can do a quick check on your graph. It looks like that's right, right? The y-intercept is 20. The slope is negative. It's looking pretty good. Okay, that's our prediction equation. Now the next thing says predict the percent in 2010. Yeah. So how is that in this one? Um, because it was zero comma something. Oh, yeah. So it was along the y-intercept. Okay, so in 2010, well, that means that I'm going to use a certain number of years since 1985. Am I going to put in 2010? What would I put in? 25. So it is, yeah, 25. Right, so years since 1985, so there would be 15 years to get it to 2000, and then another um, 10 years to go to um, 2010. So 2010, or 2012, whoops, <laughs> 2010 is how many years since 1985. So you can subtract the two, or you could do what Carrington said and just say, oh, well, it's going to take 15 to get to 2,000 and then another time. So 25 years. So that means I'm plugging in x equals 25 into the equation y equals negative 7 over 15 times x plus 20. Okay, so let's go ahead and get, get out your calculator. If I was putting this into my calculator, I would do negative 7 over 15 in parentheses times 25 and then plus 20. I would just put it all in like that together. So I'm going to have negative 7 divided by 15 times 25 plus 20. I get 8.3 repeating, right? So it's about 8.3%. So at that college, it looks like um, the applications aren't coming in as much, right? Only 8.3% um, of students are applying to that particular college. All right. All right, if you wanted to know what that is as a fraction, do you guys know how to do the fraction button on your calculator? Yeah, so you just hit math 1 and it changes to a fraction, so it would be 25 over 3. So it's kind of nice when you need to know a fraction answer. All right, so this next one, it says the table shows the number of calories burned per hour by a 140-pound person running at various speeds. Make a scatter plot and draw a line of fit. So again, we have these points. We're going to make our scatter plot. But now we start at 508. So do not be the person that's like, oh, I'm going to have 0, and then I have 50, and then 100, and so on. All right, if it starts at 508, what I usually do is I draw a little zigzag, okay, and that means that my graph has been cut off a little bit, okay, and then I start at whatever value I want. So let's start at 500, okay, so I'm trying to go up to maybe like 900 since I have 858, so you can count the number of spaces. I'm guessing it's probably okay to do like 25, so I'm going to have 550. 2 up, 600, 650, 700, 750, uh, I'm running out of room, 800, I think I'm good, 850, and then 900 at the top, right? All right, now your numbers are, your speed is 5, 6, 7, and 8. So this one you don't have to cut off, you could just do 1, 2, 3, 4, like that. And since the things are so tiny, let's make them like, every two. Kind of spread them out. This is a little close. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, and then we'll label each axis. So this is going to be calories for y and speed for x. All right, so then we can plot. Really, the hardest part about these is, you know, figuring out what to make your grid, <laughs> figuring out what numbers to use. And you can use graph paper if you don't want to use um, the grids I made on your homework. All right, so we're going to have 5, 508. Okay, we're going to have 6, 636. It's a little bit more than 650. All right, we're going to have 7, 731. And we're going to have 8, 858. Like that. 
So you can take your ruler, you can kind of move it around if you want. If it works out nicely, I usually make it first and last, like I was saying. So I'm going to use first and last and connect. So it looks pretty good. So my prediction equation, like I said, I'm using the first and last point. So I'm going to have m is equal to 858 minus 508 divided by 8 minus 5. So you don't have to use the first and last. So on your homework, if you're checking with a friend and they have a different answer than you, that may happen. Right? But their slopes are going to be kind of close, and the y-intercepts should be kind of close as well. All right, so divide them out. So we get 350 divided by 3. You can figure out what that is if you want, but it's a slope, right? So leaving it as a fraction isn't a big deal. So you could have 116.6 repeating. All right, so I'm going to have y minus y1 equals m. Let me write out the equation in case you guys forgot. So y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. I have to use this equation um, because I don't have my y-intercept. Now, you could do the y equals mx plus b, I guess, and plug in something for x and y and get what b is. We've done that before, but we're trying to get used to using this point slope form. All right, so pick any point. So of those two that I'm creating the line, it doesn't matter which one I choose. So I'm going to choose the 5, 508, just because they're smaller numbers. So I'm going to have y minus 508 equals m is 350 over 3 times x minus 5. So I get y minus 508 equals 350 over 3x minus 1750 over 3. Okay, and I'm going to use the fraction button to help me. So I'm going to take negative 1750 over 3 and I'm going to add 508 to it. And I hit math 1. So I get y equals 350 over 3x minus 226 over 3. Okay, so if you do the method where you have cut off part of your graph, so where we did the little zigzag line, all right, just beware that um, when you have a certain y-intercept, it may not look like that y-intercept on your graph because you've cut off part of it. Do you see what I'm saying? Always think about what it means to have a negative y-intercept. So in this case, if I have a negative y-intercept, that means if I have a speed of zero, you're not losing calories, you're gaining calories, right? And that kind of makes sense, I guess. So your body's like storing all the calories from your food. All right, so that's okay for that one to be a negative. Whereas on the other one, if you had a negative percent, that would be weird. So kind of think about these real life problems. All right, so the next thing. So it says if a 140 pound woman runs 5.5 miles per hour, so that's going to be the x value, right? X was speed. I'm guessing it's going to be somewhere between 508 and 636 in the end. So we're going to use our equation to find it. So I'm going to have y equals 350 over 3 times x equals 5.5, right? So I'm going to plug in 5.5 minus 226 over 3. So I plug in. All right, so when you do that, you should get 566.3 repeating. So around 566 calories which makes sense based on our original data, so that's good. Okay, is this pretty easy? Do you guys like the scatter plot stuff? Mm -hmm. It's not too bad. The only thing that scares people is there's, it's like a story problem. There's words thrown out. So, I think you guys will be fine.